And of course, many Columbia fencers and Penn fencers have been great champions in our history. Now here's a donation we got from John Norma, who has an amazing career also. John Norma went to Columbia University. He was trained by Bill Reith in Cleveland. And uh, as an NBA fencer, he's won 10 national titles in team event with the New York Athletic Club. He's won three national titles of his own individual. He's been an Olympian, and here's his Olympic blazer from the 92 games. And so uh, we're very happy. Normal also donated his warm-up suit. And there's the jacket from the warm-up, and we have the pants also. So we're very happy to have this great Columbia graduate. And uh, there's a picture of the Normal and his team with his coach, George Korobotovich, Steve Trevor, Bob Cottingham, and then we have Lisa Piazza, who's a doctor, and then there, of course, Alador Kogler, who's also in the Hall of Fame. So we move over, and here's an Olympic jacket worn by Cliff Bear. He also has donated two ties that he wore marching in the stadium for the Olympics in 96 and 2000. And there's Cliff uh, standing next to uh, Felicia Zimmerman at the 96 Games. And Cliff, after Penn, Cliff, by the way, is, is nominated for the Hall of Fame this year. He has four national titles, and he was ranked in the top 10 in the world. So well, we're very happy to have something from Cliff Bear here. And uh, all through the museum, we have masks dating back to the late 1800s, 1870s or so. And these masks are really indicative of a style of fencing and of people in fencing from another world. And I'll show you a couple of things I have in here. Let's see. Uh, here's one, a great mask here in my case. Here's a typical example of a mask from the late 1800s. And you'll see that there's a space missing here. And when these masks were sold, you could buy them with forehead pieces, and some of them had ear sections. And you'd buy ear sections for an extra nickel, forehead sections for an extra nickel, and then for a total an extra dime, you got the whole thing. And in those days, they called them a helmet. You might think that this looks very flimsy, but remember that in the 1800s, the only people doing sports were the wealthiest people. And it was considered among people then that only a person with no social class would hit you in the face. As ridiculous as that may sound. So many people actually got pretty hard scars in their faces uh, using masks or using no masks, I should say. So we have some very interesting masks going into the past in the museum. Uh, to go another area here, here is the first minutes of the AFLA, our organization, in 1891. And this is, of course, written in fountain pen. And it's the Constitution and all the early minutes going into the early 1890s. So this is a great relic of our history right here. I want to show you something else in terms of masks. This is a bayonet training mask. And of course, bayonet fencing was part of the fencing world, too. Fencing books would cover bayonet, two-weapon fencing, all kinds of things. So this is from, I believe, 1917. It was made in New England, and it was for the military training in World War I. And that just gives you another idea of some of the things. Other masks, you can see here's the ear covers on this mask for that extra nickel or so. And this mask has no forehead pieces. So you can really see how primitive these masks were. And of course, fencing masks led to the beginning of catcher's masks. And Harvard was the first place they came up with the idea to modify fencing masks for the catchers in baseball. Now, if we look over here, we can see a display for Jason Rogers. Jason has made a huge donation to our club. And uh, he's on a, a trip right now. He's been modeling a lot. Here you can see him in the Wall Street Journal. He came to the museum to do a shoot recently. And uh, he's made an incredible donation. Here is the uh, warm-up suit from the uh, 08 Beijing Games where Jason and the Sabre team got the silver medal. He also gave me a gold medal from the uh, NAC at Portland last year and Pan Am Games gold medals. And here you can see he won the individual gold medal in 09 for the Pan Am Games. And the team took the gold medal also. And this was the team medal. And Jason has very beautifully donated these things for us. Also his shoes and his hat from the Olympics. And then from the 04 games, Jason, we have the warm-up suit and his complete uniform from the 04 games in Athens. 
And uh, here's a great photo of Jason, where he learned to coach. He was coached by Daniel Costin, and he earned his A rating when he was only 14 years old. Learned defense in Los Angeles. So that's our display from Jason Rogers. And it's an incredible group of stuff that he's given us. And uh, thank you for uh, sitting through my tour number two about my museum. Thanks very much.